All right, my friends. So my intention for this video is to explain um, about my personal experience being in Spain right now, um, about the Google Fi service, whether it works on an iPhone 7, uh, what my experiences are, uh, the use of a Google Pixel 3. Uh, this is the standard one, it's not the large one. And I have to be turning this way, I think. So anyways, my experience has been, my experience with the Google Fi service has been phenomenal. Um, I've been using this as the main phone line, uh, the Google Pixel 3, and um, my phone calls here in Spain, back home to a standard voice over IP landline and to my friends, have been fantastic. Right now I'm recording on an iPhone 7 Plus phone, um, so what are the advantages of both? This guy is fantastic for taking photos. So, oftentimes, right? Uh, with the iPhone, you have to like turn it on, swipe up. I don't know what they do with the new one. I have the one with the button. But this one is pretty cool. You just double click this guy and you have the camera on. So I just photographed my face. And then you, you, and then you can go like this and now you're in selfie mode. So um, this phone is fantastic. I've been having a great time photographing um, some of the great artworks here in the museums. Um, I visited uh, Thyssen Bermitsa yesterday and taking a photograph of the Caravaggio in there, there was a woman saint there with a the wheel next to her. So I photographed the Caravaggio with this phone and with this phone and uh, the Caravaggio came out much better. The artworks uh, pop really good. What's been also really cool is actually using both, um, both phones with the same um, Google Photos thing connected. So you just log in and have it back up. So every time I would go back, get back to the hotel, any pictures I took with this iPhone and with this guy, they would get uploaded into a shared album where then I could share it with friends. I have a, view, a way to view it and things like this. So that's fantastic. What I'm doing with the iPhone 7, I have not tested the telephone sim with it because I didn't want to uh, mess around with it right now. But uh, basically, the SIM, the data SIM, why Google Fi is awesome, is you could plug in the data SIM into there. And I've been getting LTE service on the iPhone. At first, I wasn't understanding why it wasn't working, but you have to go to the settings on the iPhone called APN and uh, type in the letters H2G2. That's the letters H is in Harry, the number two, G is in George, and then the number two. All one word, all lowercase. You plug it into two places. That's what I did. I did it for the 3G and uh, the LTE part. And basically what happened there was the LTE started coming up and I've been getting pretty much the LTE service on this phone and on this phone, no problem with the Google Fi service. I really like that. You know, I think I already used up six gigs. I've been listening to like walking around and listening to audios. On this guy, I installed uh, this browser called Brave. Just go to the app store on the Google Pixel and uh, you could basically um, install that, the Brave browser. The benefit of the Brave browser is this, GPS is that you could lost. actually listen to, um, uh, to the music video, let's say, skipping the ads, so you never see an ad ever again on YouTube without getting the premium subscription. And when you, you can turn off the screen and then uh, swi so like swipe up or like turn it on, like turn on the screen for a second and there's a little play button. So that's why I recommend the Brave browser because this way you have like an awesome experience. Uh, finding my way around uh, town has been also really awesome. And there's an app here called Google Translate. What it allows you to do is that basically you have two buttons on each side. You could speak your stuff in English and then it's gonna write the stuff in into a Spanish and also pronounce it for you. So it's like, um, let me just show you how it works basically. So I have it on the home screen. Um, see? I have it on the home screen and start saying stuff. So that's what I've been doing. I've been actually walking around with 
two phones and um, like, like for example at the museum uh, I photograph with this guy uh, the museums that do allow you photography are the uh, Thyssen Bermitsa Museum fantastic you go there of course no flash but at the Prado Museum even if you like take a selfie they're like oh don't take pictures I don't know what's up with Prado but a lot of places I had uh, a lot of really good time. The other museum that allows photography uh, no problem is Museum of Archaeology, Museo Nacional Archeologico. So that's actually really fantastic. What else, what else? Uh, spending a week in Spain is fantastic. I do recommend probably at home getting all three guidebooks on Amazon for Madrid. Anytime you go to a town, yeah, you could probably go on TripAdvisor, but I actually do like the guidebooks. The reason being is that they allowed you to uh, find the hotel easier. It's like, where is the hotel that is just absolutely the one in the center of town? So I don't know if you could see this uh, view. This is absolutely stunning. I'm really happy I'm here. So I got here uh, last Wednesday. And now it's Monday and I'm leaving tomorrow and basically I saw every museum if you're in Madrid definitely you have to visit San Lorenzo uh, de uh, Escorial San Lorenzo de Escorial it's basically a 40 minute ride if you have a Google Pixel phone which I recommend or or even an iPhone it probably could work too but the reason I got the Google Pixel phone working here is that uh, apparently Google Fi service claims that this guy has better service. Here's another tip with this guy. When I first got it, I had an issue with uh, the calls. So I call up Spain, like my hotel couldn't charge my card for, for whatever reason. So I call them up and it starts breaking up. I'm like, what's going on? So there's a setting on this phone. You initially want to turn off. It's, it says basically, um, make calls over Wi-Fi when make calls over Wi-Fi when single is strong enough so that's a really bullshit thing I don't know why they're trying to push it maybe they're trying to save you data but um, look you definitely get what you pay for uh, back at home I have the prepaid service Virgin Mobile and the reason I use Virgin Mobile is that for like 50 bucks a month I have unlimited service and I love watching YouTube through LTE so I'm probably using like 25 gigs of data a month. No problem, like 20, 25. There's a lot of YouTube videos that are fantastic. If you have the iPhone, you may want to install the app called Purify. What it does is that it removes the ads from your uh, Safari browser on your iPhone. And uh, I don't think you'll ever see ads again. And it's Purify, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if it's free, it might be three bucks, uh, but it's definitely a worthwhile app. You want to have complete service. And here's why I actually don't like YouTube Premium is that I did have the YouTube Premium subscription. I was paying $15 a month or $12 a month, whatever the price was. And what was happening with my um, video watching was that when I got onto another computer or another uh, place, I would have uh, the video pause in the, other, in, the, in the second place. Meanwhile, like in my home, I have several computers. I found it a little bit annoying. But if you don't have the premium subscription, uh, just have like the ad block, you are pretty much set. Also, it's nice to have ad block so you don't watch ads. On the PC, you want to get this thing called ad block plus. Ad block plus, just type in ad block plus for Chrome, for Firefox, all that stuff. It's going to make your experience on the internet much better. Also, your pages are probably going to load faster because you're not loading ads. So right now, I'm in... Um, at apparently the palace, some sort of palace that they have here, and there's like a fountain going on. Uh, I have to look it up. So here's another trick that I've been doing sometimes. So I've been photographing with this guy, and there's uh, tons of mythological paintings. Like for example, you have uh, my favorite painter now is Rubens. They have a lot of paintings by Rubens here. Uh, he was from like 1600 about, like early 1600 AD, and what, what I love about the, the paintings is that they're so realistic, lifelike, and they also transmit this powerful energy of beauty, of excitement. He painted um, both Christian themes of the various different saints 
and he also painted things like um, of the mythological scene, you know, Venus, one of my favorite p paintings in uh, uh, Thies and uh, Bermitsa was actually, uh, there was uh, Venus and Cupid. The Venus was so lifelike and Cupid is like holding a, a mirror to her, showing her beauty. Rubens also has a fantastic painting uh, in uh, La Prado, Museum Nacional La Prado. Apparently, that's the best museum. That's the place where you can't really photograph stuff. But, uh, but here's a little tip. If you double click this and you use this little side button thing, um, double click this, Turn left to right? and you press the volume button, it takes a shot, a snap, snapshot. So if there's really something you like, you could probably double click it and like hold it by your chest and be like, click, click, you know, uh, but you don't have to do it. It's up to you, whatever you like. But that's why I really like the Google Pixel for photography. And also the smaller size is easier to handle. This case is very bare minimal. Um, it's some sort of thing I got on Amazon. I mean, like very simple. I, I have a similar case on my iPhone. I just like to have the edges protected because if, if something falls, it usually hits the edge and that's what you need to protect it. Also, I like to protect this camera bump so it doesn't get like scratched up on the table. So I'm really excited about this park. Uh, Google Fi service has been really amazing for me. Um, I'm, I'm not usually promoting things, but I might put a promotion code for my Google Fi service because apparently you get like in a promotional link or something. But I mean, I don't care. Just get it yourself. Um, most important thing to realize is that it is better than ever to travel now. And nowadays you have uh, reviews of things on the different pages. But one thing I also have to point out with the reviews is that sometimes uh, only people that have like uh, less than positive experience, they start uh, writing things. And I, I was actually thinking about that. And I'm probably going to do reviews uh, like this that if I can't say nothing good about this the service I probably won't say nothing at all or especially if I can't say something Overwhelmingly good because why am I gonna recommend something that I'm not doing myself? That's the one thing. It's like This trip, you know, I went I went myself for the week uh, I signed up to the Norwegian Airlines email list and um I've used them before and uh, they sent me an email like a promotion here like these specific days you could uh, travel here very inexpensively like the I, I've probably found the cheapest rate ever I only used carry-ons and I was able to get it for $268 round trip JFK to over here and back back and forth I left um, at night 1159 at night but that was actually a really good time to leave because if you li li leave around then, by the time you get to Madrid, it's 12 in the afternoon here. Because we have to realize that uh, you are further ahead here in time than you are in the States. So that's awesome. Like the Norwegian airline list was pretty cool. It was a similar price also to go to Amsterdam in the Netherlands. So like there was a, there was a little chart that came up and I'm like, sure. But here's the catch-all. This, uh, this might be a European thing, but I'm starting to catch on to it. It's they uh, lure you in with a lower price sometimes, but then they try to nickel and dime you across the things. Because uh, when I first came to the airport, um, I just had carry-on. I had this little small carry pouch, carry-on pouch, like 13 inches tall and a carry-on bag, you know, like uh, according to dimensions. And I, of course, I didn't weigh it. But um, they, then they, they like line us up and start weighing the things. So instead of 10 kilos, so make sure at home it's 10 kilos, you have maybe a way to weigh it. Because what happened with me is that he's like, oh, it's 14 kilos. If you want to check in your bag, uh, you got to pay, you got to pay 100 bucks, right? Because you're over. And they count also the carry on bag you take with you. So what I did was, I was like, can I have a manager, please? So I speak to the manager, I tell him, hey, you know, like, uh, I've been using you guys for a long time. I've been uh, a cu your customer a long time. I really appreciate it. I really don't understand these, um, you know, measurements. So I'm like, can you just please give me those, they give you these little tags, a JFK, to put on your bag. So 
you gotta understand that these people do have to make money and selling tickets like this. Um, I don't know if they even broke even uh, with my flight, but think about it like this. If they don't sell the ticket to me, that seat is gonna be lost. So why are they gonna like carry around empty air? Better get $270 for me. So uh, that's the tip, 10 kilograms, or just be really nice, sweet talking, or I, I've, I've seen other people have no problem either, but um, just pack that. Also what I did was I got these bags on Amazon. Basically you could squeeze, you could put clothing in there, and it's like a Ziploc bag, and you could like push the air out in it, and uh, it'll like really compact the, the stuff. And I also brought some uh, travel like soaps. So like the undergarments, you might want to wash a couple of times. Things like pants, you have a couple pairs of pants, you'll be fine wearing them more than once. But like things like underwear, socks, you want to you wanna wash. So you could always wash those in the sink, probably with a hotel soap and things like this. I'm kind of getting like maybe a little bit on and on with this painting, but this palace is absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful. So I highly, highly recommend visiting Madrid and putting together um, an experience that's unlike, uh, unlike any other. So just uh, be always appreciative of the places, get the guidebooks. One of the things I also used here, I've been really enjoying because I, have, I now have a Google Pixel and an iPhone, is uh, OneNote. OneNote allows you to add, take notes, add to their pictures, whatever you want, and you're logged in with the same account on both, and all, the, all that data, it synchronizes across the devices. So that's how you can actually get across the barriers with the, with the note taking, I actually love it. And if you like uh, copy and paste the YouTube video link in there, uh, you can actually play the video directly from OneNote. So that's pretty cool. That's another thing that I've been doing. Like if I need to take a quick note, um, nowadays uh, papers, like paper, pen and paper, it seems very inefficient because you could just copy and paste stuff from the internet. Uh, what other tips can I offer you guys? Always have fun, always be grateful, always be appreciative. Uh, before coming here, I listened to um, this uh, audio course, I think level one of Pimsleur's Learn to Speak and Read Spanish. Uh, the, the cool thing about Pimsleur is this, is that you listen to the, you listen to the audio and then you just repeat what he says. Listen and repeat. It's basically listen and repeat over and over again. And I gotta say, it's pretty awesome. Uh, it teaches you the important things like where is the bathroom um, and also knowing how to count. You know, like Quanta Cuesta, like how much does it cost? Adonde esta, like where is it? Um, and usually, usually it's very easy. And oftentimes you could find a person that speaks English, so that's not a problem. And if you don't understand, what number it is, you just look on the screen of the computer on the, on the check and you'll be pretty much set. So what else, what else? The museums here are fantastic. Um, life here is good. Oh, oh, here's a tip. There's a place in the center of town that I've been enjoying. It actually has buffet style sushi. But it's not buffet style like the regular way, way where they just dump a, like a bunch of food in the middle of the room and you're like uh, getting up from the table like 10 times. What they do is they give you a little thing where you check off uh, the sushis or whatever. They even have beef like teriyaki beef, duck, everything. So like for 20 euros, uh, it's like an all you can eat, but it's not like up to 15 dishes. Uh, being a big guy, I was able to get the whole 15. Uh, I usually start with the meats and then end off with the sushis because they're very light. And uh, it's been high quality. It's called Sumo something, Sumo Sushi or Sumo Fusion. And it's in the center of town on the Gran Via. And I've uh, ate there twice already. I've been really enjoying that. What else, what other tips can I give you guys? I mean, Madrid is beautiful. Prada Museum, San Lorenzo de Escorial. It's a, so it's basically a palace and a monastery. At the height of the Spanish Empire under Philip II, uh, because he won a battle, uh, I believe, against the French uh, on the day uh, of, of the Saint, Saint Lawrence, he decided to build a whole basilica. So in that basilica, you also have the tomb, the, 
king's tombs in, in, in there. So Philip II, I think Charles V was his father, and a whole bunch of others, queens and queens, buried in like a mausoleum there, like in very tasteful, um, uh, highly decorated, beautifully designed work. The church is also very beautiful. Um, absolutely stunning. Um, the views from outside are also fantastic. I was, I was able to get a little bit of a sun tanning uh, in the garden. So basically, there's a couple entrances, but there's a, the main entrance, you go around the back. Just ask them, donde esta el jardín? And um, you can walk to the back, and it's absolutely stunning there. Some of the most beautiful views. I actually love the pastoral view of the place, where it's uh, like the natural beauty. And I got a chance to visit also the king's quarters, the Philip II's quarters where he lived. So imagine a whole empire being run by a king who has a bedroom that uh, connects him directly into the basilica. And the views from his bedroom were absolutely stunning. There's the, there was a little private garden area with these amazed gardens. And the views of the mountains are fantastic. The little village that it's located in is also uh, absolutely stunning and beautiful. I, I can only say like fantastic. So San Lorenzo de Escarao, El Prado Museum, Thyssen Bermitsa. What else? Prado Museum is fantastic. I, I really enjoyed Prado. Museum of Archaeology is fantastic. This place is also fantastic with its churches. I mean, look at that. How can you not love this Gothic Baroque style church? Uh, yesterday I was actually able to arrive at the mass and it was really cool. Having learned a bit of Spanish, I was understand. I was able to understand certain things of it, and yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Like this is this, I believe, is a Catholic country, and the churches are absolutely stunning. I am actually blown away by this. Just look at this. This is uh, this is my tour for today. This is pretty much my last day, like full day being here. So um, I'm guessing this is the palace area. And it's been really good talking to you guys, um, walking through here. I know it's definitely necessary for people to have guides and um, just talking off the, off the cuff about their experience with travels, with, you know, the Google Fi service, because I, I didn't see anybody being in another country. The only place, actually, I saw a video about somebody using Google Fi service, no problem in China and using all the Google services too. What's also cool about the Google Pixel is that there's a little lock screen, a uh, little lock icon on the top. Um, hold on. So the, the fingerprint is on the back, but on the over here, there's a little lock. There's a little lock icon. So it is, um, what it means is that it's a, it's a VPN. It's a, so even though my Google phone connects to public Wi-Fi, I have no issues with somebody stealing my information because sometimes what happens is that people connect to Wi-Fi and because they don't have an encrypted connection, uh, sometimes people's passwords could get leaked or stolen or whatever. I don't know how that works, but having a VPN automatically free included with your Google Pixel service, I think is fantastic. So I, I, I overviewed everything uh, that you could possibly actually uh, think of at this moment. Um, my trip has been fantastic. I took tons of pictures. Best photograph. It's good to have two. Data sims for uh, Google Fi service are actually free. So here's how it works. You pay 10 bucks per gig up to the first six gigs, and then uh, you have unlimited gigs of data extra. But what's cool is that you get the data sim, and I plug that into this iPhone, and I've been getting LTE service with it. With LTE service, I was able to call my uh, friends through uh, iVideo, uh, whatever the video chatting, like uh, video talking thing that you have on the iPhone. Uh, but on their end, when they're watching it, there's a special phone number for the Google video that comes up uh, for the, uh, the iMessage video thing for the iPhone, which is cool. My friends have iPhones, the iPhone is fantastic. I love the service. It's definitely a good phone. I love watching uh, videos on it, but I also, I also love this thing. So. Probably for video, iPhone is better. 
for photograph taking, this guy is better, especially in museums. And also, also I just like the ease. Just double click, right? And then you have double click. Oh, and then you have this guy. And then you double click, and then you just start 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 making photographs. Look at this. Boom. Double click and photograph. All right, guys. So give it a thumbs up. If there's any additional information, like like a link to Google Fi or whatever, maybe I'll put it in the bottom of the video, but I won't, I won't promise it. Because this like review stuff is kind of like a hobby of mine. I'm busy doing a lot of other things like traveling and enjoying life and being thankful every day for this wonderful existence in this wonderful world with so much beauty to behold. When you visit all these museums, your eyes have expanded. Just go on Wikipedia like while you're, uh, what does this mythological scene mean? You just type it into Wikipedia and just search for it. Install the app maybe, I don't know, it makes life easier. Uh, it's just fantastic. Living in the modern world on the cusp where we could travel freely, we have a phone service that works anywhere and um, just have a fantastic day guys, you know. Like, thumbs, all that, whatever, and I don't care if you do. Um, yeah. All right, my friends. See you in the next video, and it will be good talking to you. Bye.